An ancient shirt from Sultan al fateh's era fuses with Haken's skin. Once he puts it on, a bizarre symbol is left on his chest. What's strange is that when the woman shoots him, the bullet gets flattened and falls off his face. Haken works in an antique shop with his father, Nisset. He delivers a vintage carpet to a customer. On his way back, he decides to apply for a job. And when he asks about the employer, he's told that he's the Turkish business tycoon. Faisal Erdem. Layla conducts the interviews, and Haken's application is turned down because she doesn't find him suitable for the job. He doesn't hold a degree, but he saves a little girl from crushing under a falling chandelier. Luckily for him, Faisal has seen everything. When Haken returns to the store, a customer asks about a magic shirt from the Ottoman era. She shows a picture of the shirt to Nisset, who says they don't have it. But Haken confirms they have it. The customer offers a handsome sum of money for the shirt. She leaves her card with Haken, who won't spare an effort to find the shirt. The father calls someone and says that they must move quickly. Somewhere else, Faisal's bodyguard Mazhar convinces a businessman to give up the project in favor of their company. The man refuses, and Majer strangles him to death. In a bar, Haken and Memo talk about their project for which they need financial funding. When he remembers the customer who came to the store, both go back to look for the shirt. And they find it, and deliver it to the customer, who becomes positive that it's what she wants. And she pays millions for it. But Nesid arrives and snatches the shirt, saying that it isn't for sale. Meanwhile, a third party enters and under an open gunfire, they kill the customer and seriously wrong Nesset. Haken intends to take his father to the hospital, but Nesset tells him to take him to a pharmacy he knows because now that's the safest place for them. When they arrive, the owner hurriedly takes him for medical treatment. Haken feels guilty. Once he looks for his father, he finds no one. The girl behind the cashier closes the pharmacy and takes him to a secret hideout. There he finds the doctor has extracted the bullet from his chest. But he's about to die because he has lost a lot of blood. He tells him that he's dying and that he must believe what the doctor and his daughter tell him. Haken doesn't believe the unexpected turn his life is taking. The doctor solaces him. In a short while, he asks for the shirt. In this state, Haken can't trust anyone. He doubts him. They tell him that Nesset took him when he was little. He said they're the saviors and that they are loyal to him. He's the protector. They carry on saying that he must accept his truth. His mission is to find the immortal and kill him to save this world. To confirm the truth of what he says, Murat asks him to wear the shirt. He wears it right away. Something strange happens as the shirt disappears inside his skin. Zainab shoots at him, and the bullet collides upon itself. Faisal shows Leela the camera recording where Haken saves the child. He learns that he applied for a job at the company, and now he wants her to give him the job. Memo has been kidnapped, and Tekin, the thug, asks about his friend Hekan. He says that he doesn't know him, by chance, they were at the same place. Murat tells Haken about the story behind the magic shirt. The shirt came into existence at the time when Sultan al fateh conquered Constantinople. He had enemies from the immortals, and their goal was to destroy the world. To avoid the evil, there were three items. The ring. Whenever he put it on his finger, it shone, indicating the immortals were coming to him. Then the dagger with which he can kill them and the magic shirt. The Sultan chose a robust, strong man who got to use the three ways combined. Mirat tells him that he's the last descendant of the protectors. He tells him that he still doesn't know who the mortal is. Haken doesn't believe him. He asked to leave him alone to mourn the deceased man, his father. He feels the guilt and says he won't allow anyone to die because of him. He met his friend, Memo. When Zainab checks on him, she doesn't find him. She tells her father they must move quickly. The next day, Tekin continues torturing Memo when one of his men says they have located the old man who has the shirt. Tekin speaks to Mazar on the phone. He tells him they still don't know who the young man with him is. 
Haken sneaks into his house. He remembers his upbringing once he finds a picture of Neset, Murat, and a man named Kimal. He gets a message from Memo. He hears someone sneaking into his house, and once he finds it Zainab, he tells her that he must help his friend Memo, who sent his location after escaping from the kidnappers. She gives him the shirt. In case of any bad thing, he'll be protected. While he is on the way, he gets a call from Layla telling him that the CEO accepted his job application. Haken doesn't take the job because he's been busy with all the events recently. When he arrives at the scheduled location, he searches for Memo. He finds him sitting on a bench. And when he checks he's fine, his body falls over dead. The sniper shoots at Haken, but fortunately, he is wearing the magic shirt that's why nothing harms him. When she learns that the gang is after Haken, Zainab takes him back to the secret hideout. And Haken shows Murat the picture he found in the house. Merit confirms that Kimal is his real father. He says the only one who knows about the immortal is his dad. Zainab says that this is why they must find the ring. They'll be able to reach the immortal in a faster way. Haxon says it's necessary to get the three pieces in the fastest possible way and then search for the immortal and save the world. Zainab thinks it's the immortal behind the major crimes in the city. Merit brings a file of a woman named Aze. She's one of the protectors and lives in a place far from the city. She's responsible for the ring with the precious stone. Zainab takes the file and heads out with Hekin to her place. Majhar meets Faisal, who is thrilled because his company won the auction. The restoration of an ancient building in Turkey, the Hagia Sophia building. Zainab and Hekin arrive at Aze's address and they find that the place is deserted. Despite that, they decide to enter the house and find a man asleep on a sofa. They learn from him that he's Ken, and Ace is his mother, and that he is only protecting her. Haken intervenes. He speaks calmly, lowers Zenith's weapon, and says that they're not here to harm his mother or anything of the sort, but rather they want to ask some questions. When he feels a bit assured, he takes them to his mother who's sick and unable to talk. He then leaves them on the pretext of preparing chai. When Ken is away, he calls the gang. He says that he has put the security camera on to record everything they say, and anything they may say about the stone, the dagger, and the shirt, they'll know about it. Haken and Zainab try their best to make her say something. The woman seems unsettled. Once Haken shows her the symbol on his chest, she shows them the ring inside her mouth. She warns them that Ken isn't her son. He's one of the immortals. When he hears all that on the camera, Ken gets his weapon intending to take them off guard and attack. He raises his gun when Zainab ceases his move from behind with her pistol. Aze, who was confined for a long time, shoots him dead. But the gang has reached the place. She hands Haken the ring saying it should be in his protection. She says for its stone, they must search for Sinan. Then she sacrifices herself and distracts the gang as much as she can. Meanwhile, Zainab escapes in the car with Haken. On the way when they're sure nobody is after them, Haken calls from Ken's phone and rings the last number on the call logs. It rings on the other side. Zainab snatches the phone from his hand and throws it away. She's afraid that someone may track the call. Their conversation is interrupted by a call from Layla, who tells him that even if he doesn't accept the job, he must meet Faisal, the CEO. Haken meets Layla. When suddenly, Mashar comes who doesn't know about Haken. Mazahar receives a call, and Haken hears the voice of the same man he called from Khan's phone. He learns that Mashar is one of the immortals and accepts the job to observe all his moves. He goes to their hideout and says there that the immortal is Mazur, who is disguised as a security man in the company that is owned by Faisal Erdem. For this reason, he has joined the guard team. And Murat searches in the records for the name that Zainab mentioned to him, Sinan. He finds out that he's a historical figure who died hundreds of years ago. Since Sinan was an architect, his name is connected to many buildings, and the stone must be present in one of them. 
he decides to do a bit of research to find in which one of those buildings the stone is buried. At Faisal's company, Layla meets her boss and tells him about the party they will hold to celebrate getting the project of restoring Hagia Sophia building. Faisal is keen on the project, and he gives her a golden necklace to wear at the party as a gesture of appreciation for her long service in the company. Zainab finds two buildings that were important to Sinan. She expects that the stone will be in one of them. One of them is a grand mosque, and the other is the shrine in which Sinan is buried. She thinks that most likely it's in the shrine. There is a person outside the pharmacy who is watching Murat, and when he enters, Murat recognizes him. After that, we see this person in the hideout answering Zainab's call, which means that he harmed Murat or perhaps killed him. At the party, Haken meets Faisal for the first time. He thanks him for giving him the job. Also, in another place at the party, we see that Zainab has come since Haken isn't answering her calls. Layla tells her that he's somewhere around. She offers to be part of the team that is going to work on Hagia Sophia's project. Since she is studying history, it will be a good offer for her. Zainab rejects it and carries on searching for Haken. Meanwhile, a weird man rushes toward Faisal wanting to kill him from behind his back. Haken stops him. We learn that this man is the son of the businessman who was killed by Majer. He wants to avenge his father as he thinks that Faisal is the one who killed him. Zainab meets Hakan and tells him that she has found the place of the stone and that they must go to Sinan's shrine as soon as possible. Here, Layla interrupts them and tells Haken that Faisal wants to thank him for protecting him on his first day of work. He agrees, especially since he admires Layla. Zainab leaves alone. When she arrives at the pharmacy, she notices something strange there and finds her father's glasses broken on the floor. She finds her father in the secret hideout tied in a chair. As soon as she points her gun, the same man attacks her from behind. Initially, Zainab manages to defend herself, but then he strikes her with an electric shock, causing her to faint. He ties her next to her father. The man searches for a specific thing. When he approaches Zainab, she hits him in the head and then surrounds him with her legs restricting his movement. He's one of the protectors. Zainab leaves him when she learns that everything that happened was a misunderstanding. His name is Amir and his father is Sardar. Emir says that his mission was to protect A's, and when he saw these people fleeing from there, he thought they were the immortals. Merit tells him the man who was with Zainab is the protector they were waiting for. In a short while, Haken joins the team. Merit says that before they launch their attack on the immortal, he has to go with Emmer to the island. He must know about his family and the heavy responsibility placed on his shoulders. Just to get to know his family, Haken agrees to accompany Emmer to the island. Merit goes with Zainab to the shrine and searches around it. When Zainab notices a faucet placed in a strange place, as if something is hidden behind it, she removes it and doesn't find anything specific behind it. The guard of the shrine happens to be a blind man who speaks to Marat. It seems as if he knows something or has a certain secret. After that, they leave the shrine. On the island, they arrive at Emer's home. He introduces Haken to his family as the protector. He also tells them that they have known the identity of the immortal. It seems that the Emer's family has strong ties with Haken's. Sardar takes him to the place where he was born. There, Haken gets to see his parents' photos for the first time. Sardar tells him everything from the beginning. His father was the protector before him, and his mother was one of the saviors. Then he tells him about the day of the massacre, when his father came back from what seemed like a battle with the immortals. He killed one of them, but the other one escaped. Unfortunately, he followed his father to his home where he killed Haken's mother. He heard the noise downstairs and ran to check what was happening. The mistake that ended his life is that he forgot to wear the magic shirt. The immortal stabbed him to death, and when the rest of the team arrived they found them dead, and the immortal left the place. When they searched the place, they found Haken inside the sink cabinet. His mother hid him there. 
Haken learns that he had two brothers who had been murdered as well. He becomes anxious once he hears this story and how his family's been killed in one day. He wants to mourn them alone. Merritt follows the blind man to his home. He searches in his books and stuff. After a couple of hours, the blind guard comes to the room. Merritt points the gun at him, asking him about his secret in guarding the shrine. He thinks that the immortal did this to his eyes to hide something. But the man explains that one night when he was on duty, a man came. He bribed him with 1,000 liras for letting him search the shrine. After some days, this man reached him at his home and tied him up. He then poured acid on his eyes. From here, he lost his vision. Upon describing the man, Merit knows that he's talking about Majar. Merit returns to his pharmacy to find Emir and Zainab. They have lost any trace of Hakan. When Haken switches his mobile phone on, they locate his place. Merit asks Emir to find him without wasting any time and bring him back. Once they meet, Haken and Emir head to the nearest restaurant for breakfast. After finding out that all his family is gone, Haken seems indifferent about what's happening around him or saving anyone else. While they are talking, Yasin, the journalist, sits at their table. He asks Haken if he's able to provide him with any clue indicating that Faisal is involved in illegal activities or something proves that the chief guard has killed their opponent, the businessman. He then hands him a flash device in which he'll find everything about Mazar. Haken refuses the collaboration. However, he takes the device with him. When they're away, Haken tells Emir that he refused to help Yasin because he seemed like one of Mazar's men. Perhaps Mazur is testing his loyalty. When they reach their usual hideout place, Murat scolds him about his repetitive escape trips. Haken replies that he's not interested anymore in their mission. He becomes frustrated and leaves for work. Emer says that he can replace him and kill the immortal after finding the dagger. But Murat insists that he should return to his family on the island and wait there for the next move. Because right now, they still aren't sure of the immortal's identity. However, Emer doesn't seem convinced. He takes the flash device and leaves the place. After he learns some information about Majar, he talks to a street food seller in front of his house. He introduces himself as Yasin, the journalist. The man tells him that one day Majar found his wife and kids dead at their home, ever since he decided to leave this place. Then the seller calls Mazar after Emer leaves him. As for Murat, he meets with Tamer, one of the saviors. They have some past issues, however. Murat asks for his help to find the dagger. He tells him that the protector has returned and now their battle with the immortal has begun. Tamer tells him that since he's back, they have to hold an emergency meeting to search for the missing parts and look into them to help the protector in his mission. Murat says they can't wait because their man isn't ready yet. Tamer discloses how to find the dagger. Emir searches Majar's apartment for any evidence that proves that he is the immortal, to prove to Murat that they must move to get rid of him. Unexpectedly, the immortal surprises him from behind and strangles him to death. He thinks that he is Yasin who was here to disclose his secrets. Haken returns to the hideout and apologizes to Murat and his daughter Zainab for not being cooperative recently and promises them that he will be like his father. He asks them about any news they may know about the dagger. Merit tells him what Tamer told him that the saviors have hidden the dagger in a place where no one can reach. Even if anyone reaches it, they won't be able to take it away. It is preserved at the biggest and most important museum in the city. Haken goes there with Zainab. They begin collecting information about the locations of the surveillance cameras, how many there are, the number of guards, and how they move. They take pictures of everything in the museum, so they develop a thorough plan to obtain the dagger. Finally, they reach the dagger, which is surrounded by two guards who do not move from their place. After they collect information, they return to the secret hideout. Zainab tells her father that based on the information they have, they can't take the dagger. What is surprising is that Haken tells them they can do it. He tells them his plan. Zainab isn't convinced they're able to steal the dagger and manage to escape from there. 
However, since they do not have enough time and do not have any other plan, Murat agrees to his plan. He just says that they need to make some adjustments to Hiken's plan and that they will enlist the help of another person among them, the saviors. They meet the person Murat is talking about and find that she's a child named Selin. When the child sees them, she runs away. They chase her until they catch her. Haken shows her the symbol on his chest. She calms down and they take her to their secret place. She says that before he died, her father left the secret to find the dagger with her. She takes out a bracelet and shows it to them, with a secret number of the security room. Their way to the dagger becomes easier now. After they have put the plan, Haken heads to work where he meets with Leela. Mazhar interrupts them. He wants Haken to accompany him somewhere, immediately. He takes him to a deserted area. There, he tells him he will train him how to shoot. But it seems from his words that he is insinuating some other things. He tells him that he notices that he is getting closer to Layla to distance him from Faisal and take his place. Haken replies that he doesn't give a dime about him or his position, and he goes to the secret hideout. But Majur appoints someone to observe his moves. The time has come and Haken is moving with Zainab. They head to the museum and over the fence they jump into the ground. No one notices them when they get inside the building itself. They reach the devices section and from there they implement the first part of the plan, which is to disable the device, and easily they leave from there. The next day, they begin with the basic part of the plan. Haken disguises himself as a worker from a maintenance company and enters the building. Zainab and Selin enter the museum normally among the people. Haken enters the monitoring room and finds two guards in front of him. He anesthetizes one of them and knocks the other down on the ground. He gives the signal to Murat, who controls the surveillance cameras remotely. He activates a virus in the system to disable the monitoring cameras for some time. Zainab and Selin carry out their part of the plan. Selin steals some of the mobile phones from people. Here, Zainab alerts them that their phone is being stolen. This is to cause some confusion and distraction. But the problem is that Murat finds out that one of the guards has woken up. He takes his gun and decides to do something before the plan is ruined. Haken reaches for the dagger and takes it from its place. The guards wake up and activate the alarm bell. Murat enters the museum with his gun drawn. He decides to sacrifice himself so that Haken can escape with the dagger. He fires several shots in the air and the guards gather around him. The plan worked. Haken runs away with the dagger and Zainab is disturbed because of what has happened to her father. They run away once they hear the police sirens. In the head out, Haken is holding the dagger and feeling its power. The news about stealing the dagger is rampant. But the real problem is that the person who was following Haken delivers the pictures to Mazur. Most of these pictures are at the pharmacy or with Murat and Zainab. He compares the pictures with the people on the news and finds out that Haken is involved in the theft. The police find the connection between Murat and the pharmacy. They go there and search for anything that will help solve the dagger theft. Of course, Haken and Zainab are in the hideout, seeing where the police will reach in their search. Finally, the police leave, and Haken and Zainab go out to check on her father. As for Mazar, he takes the pictures to Faisal and tells him about his doubts. Faisal replies that he needs to stop his obsession with Hakan. They should wait for the report of the police and then see what they can do. He must focus on his work more, otherwise he will get himself fired. Selin goes to the police center to check on Murat, and when she sees him, she finds that he is fine. When she meets Zainab and Haken outside, she tells them that he has conveyed a message, which is to cut him off and focus on the mission. Despite her sadness for her father, Zainab agrees with his opinion because they should lie low. They don't want to grab the immortal's attention, especially after the dagger disappeared. And Haken must return to his work because the immortal has begun to doubt him. And she will look for anyone who can help her free her father from prison. As for Layla, she wants to meet Faisal 
and accidentally sees the pictures in which Haken appears with Zainab and Murat. She begins to doubt his connection with the disappearance of the dagger. Zainab meets Tamer, who assists them in finding the dagger. He knows they have succeeded in their plan and that Murat has been arrested. She asks to help them find someone from the inside to release her father. He agrees, but he wants something in return. He wants to see who the protector is. Haken arrives at his workplace and notices a person behaving strangely. This person is the journalist Vassin, who has been fired from his job and knows that Faisal is the reason behind this. Like the previous time, Haken arrives at the right time and with Leela's help, he takes the gun from him and knocks him down. Zainat goes with Tamer to the police station. He promises her that he will talk to someone there and he will release her father from prison. Zainat calls Haken who tells her that they have arrested the journalist Vassin and she tells him that they have found a way to release her father from prison, but on the condition that he must go to the hideout to fulfill her promise to Tamer. Indeed, Tamer helps in releasing Murat and when Murat learns of Tamer's condition, he becomes upset. He is forced to agree to this, and the three go to meet Hukan, and Murat thanks him for helping him. However, outside the hideout, they talk. Tamer had betrayed the saviors once before when he caused the death of Haken's brothers. He defends himself by saying that he didn't mean it, but the details of his betrayal are unclear. Tamer tells him that this will be the last help from his side. He gives him the address of one of the former saviors who has been expelled from the group. Her name is Daria, and she knows the ins and outs of the immortals. At night, we see that Faisal is upset with Mazhar because this is the second time he is exposed to danger when Mazhar is away from protecting him. For this reason, he wants him to close his office for Haken because from now on, he is the one who will head the security group and Mazur will be one of his men. Here, Mazur responds to him while he is at the peak of anger and tells him that he has stood by him all these years. In return, he did not fulfill this promise. He leaves, but what did he mean by this? Layla is disappointed when she sees Haken's pictures, and when he comes to her, she tells him that she doesn't want to talk to him, and she asks him to leave her alone. He still talks to her from behind the door. When Majur comes and anesthetizes him, when Haken is back to his conscience, he finds himself tied to a chair. At first, he thinks that his secret has been exposed, but Majur tells him that he knows about his plan and that he wants to take over his place. He is the one who killed the journalist he sent to his place, and from his description, Haken knows that this person is Amer. Majur attacks him and throws him on the ground. Haken then takes a piece of broken glass from the ground and stabs Mazhar. He becomes shocked knowing that Mazhar isn't the immortal because he falls to the ground. Blood comes out of his neck and he dies there. Layla is passing by. She sees what happened. The police come to investigate the murder of Mazhar. Haken appears collapsed and Layla tells Faisal that he is the killer. The police arrest Haken. He notices the stone on the chain that Layla is wearing, and it is radioactive. It's what they are searching for. And since it's radiating right now, when Layla is next to Faisal, it means he is the immortal. Layla calls Zainab and tells her that Haken is in prison. She tells her father about that and tells him that Mazur is dead, and it is clear that he is not the immortal. He replies saying that there's one person who knows who the immortal is, but this person had been expelled by them, and it's forbidden to talk to her. He means Daria whom Tamer talked about. Faisal asks the policeman to leave him with Majar's body for a while so that he can bid him farewell. We know the truth of their story. Faisal killed Majar's wife and daughter. Masar found his family dead. He was vulnerable. Faisal promised him he'd bring them back to life once he worked for him. When Majur knew about his capabilities, he agreed to work for him. Murat tells his daughter about Daria. She was collecting information about the immortals, but after some time, she started liking their ways. That's why the master ordered her to stop working for him, but she didn't obey the rules. 
She continued with her work, which made them expel her from their group and never communicate with her. But since they are forced to determine the identity of the immortal, they are forced to talk to her. At the company, Faisal reveals his truth to Layla. He tells her that his original age is more than 1,000 years and that he belongs to a group of immortals. They were seven, and when humans learned of their origin, they chased them. His wife, Ruya, was one of the immortals, and she was killed in the last war against the saviors. But it seems that Layla doesn't believe him in a word and doesn't take him seriously. Until he proves to her that he's not human, he stabs himself in the neck, and here no blood comes out. Layla believes everything he says. He says that Haken is the protector, and that he is chasing him, but he thought that Majar was the immortal, so he killed him. Faisal goes to the police, and because of his connections, he releases Haken from prison. Since he also knows of his origin, and that he is the one who killed his entire family, Haken attacks him. But all he needs to do is stab him with a dagger to kill him. To stop him, Faisal tells him that he has kidnapped Layla because he knows that he loves her. Faisal asks to bring him the dagger and meet him in his office after one hour. In this way, Haken is forced to get the dagger. As for Murat and Zainab, they go to meet Daria, but he doesn't want his daughter to go inside with him. He goes inside, and as Tamer said, he finds her dissatisfied that their people had expelled her. For this reason, she refuses to tell him the truth about the immortal. What happens is that Zainab observes what is happening inside, and from behind, someone is pointing a gun at her. When Daria learns she's his daughter, she decides to take revenge and locks them in a room. Before locking the door, she tells them that if the immortal takes the protector's blood, he can bring any other immortal back to life. She locks them down and opens a suffocating gas inside the room. The only way to escape from the room is through the vent in the ceiling. Merit helps his daughter to escape. When she comes out of it, she runs to open the door, but she arrives late, as Mara has died. Since she can't do anything, she aims for the secret hideout. There, Haken arrives and finds Zainab crying a lot for her loss. After she calms down a little, she tells him about what Daria said, but she doesn't know who the immortal is. He tells her he is Faisal and that he kidnapped Layla in exchange for giving him the dagger. She tells him that if he submits and gives the dagger to Faisal, what will happen is that he will drink his blood and summon the rest of the immortals. In this case, the world will be destroyed, and in any case, he will not be able to save Layla. Haken shows Zainab that he's convinced by her words, so he tells her that he wants to take a short walk outside. When Zainab catches up with him, she finds that he has blocked the door of the hideout, and she's locked inside. After some minutes, Haken reaches Faisal and tells him that he knows what he intends and will not allow him to awaken the rest of the immortals to destroy the world. He replies that he just wants his wife back. Haken refuses his request, so he shoots Layla. Faisal tells him that he must move quickly to rescue her, otherwise she will die. Under this threat and his love for Leela, he carries out his request. First, he takes off his magic shirt, then he cuts himself with the dagger, fills a flask with his blood, and hands Faisal what he asked. Faisal doesn't fulfill this promise, so he asks his men to kill Hakan. Because of the training he received, Haken easily eliminates the guards and unties Layla. He can't take her to the hospital. Instead, he takes her to the hideout where he doesn't find Zainab. Haken doesn't know how to remove the bullet, and Layla's condition exacerbates. In these moments, she tells him that Faisal took advantage of her because of her mother's illness and that he would help her if she worked for him. A drop of his blood can heal a sick person, and on top of that, it can bring a dead person back to life. The bleeding increases until Leela dies. Faisal recalls the memories of his wife, Ruya, and one of the immortals whose name is Mergen tells them that Pere has died. The others escaped and now they are just the three of them. He meant that because of the immortals' marriage, humans dominated them by killing them and their descendants. 
Faisal told him not to interfere in his life, and had it not been for Rhea's intervention, he would have killed him. Haken calls Zainab. She tells him that she followed him to the company, and when she saw Faisal, she pursued him. He tells her that Faisal killed Layla, and that he wants revenge. She sends him her location and waits for him as he asks her. He arrives and wonders about Faisal. Where is he? He asks angrily. Because he is not wearing the magic shirt, Zainab prevents him from going inside. As Faisal killed his father, he'll kill him easily. But because he is determined, she gives him a pistol and enters with him. Unfortunately for them, Faisal receives a call from the company telling him about his guards, and he also knows that Layla and Haken are not there. He understands they've escaped. For this, when Haken and Zainab enter the villa, they don't find him inside. Haken says that Layla's body is in the car, and he just wants to get a drop of Faisal's blood. Unfortunately, Zainab cannot convince him to change his mind, and as usual, she remains silent. And Zainab with Haken are still searching to get anything that shows them Faisal's whereabouts. Haken finds some sketches, and Zainab recognizes them from the Hagia Sophia building. Haken says that's why Faisal was all into this building. The issue was more than just a restoration project for him. Zainab realizes that his wife's grave is there. He says that more than that, all of the immortals' graves are there, so they decide to go there as quickly as possible. Faisal is standing in front of his wife's grave. When he opens it, he finds her as she was. That is because of their power. Finally, Zainab and Hakan reach Hagia Sophia. But killing him without a dagger is impossible. So Zainab makes a plan. She tells him to let her help him for Layla's sake. He goes inside alone according to the plan. Because he doesn't wear the magic shirt, he shoots the cup with his blood in it. The blood falls on the ground, and strangely, it moves. Faisal attacks him. He says that his father is the reason. If his father had not killed his wife, he would not have followed him and killed his family afterward. Haken tells him that he knows the truth that all the crises that happen to people are because of them. According to the plan, Zainab slides the dagger on the ground to him. He tries to kill him and stabs him with a dagger. In the meantime, Haken's blood slithers into the coffins. Despite Faisal's injury, he can defeat Hakan. Zainab takes the dagger with Faisal's blood on it and inserts some drops in Leela's mouth. While they are fighting, everyone is surprised by the sound of Rhea calling. She is seen standing in front of them. Faisal's plan succeeded as Haken's blood brought her back to life. Still, his blood flows to the rest of the coffins as well. An earthquake occurs, the place is trembling, and the rest of the immortals rise from their coffins alive. Among them is Mergen. The first season ends with the immortals returning to life, and Layla also comes back alive to the world. In the coming season, we will know what Zainab and Haken will do to defeat the evil of the immortals and there will be more of the saviors fighting for their cause. Dear viewer, don't forget to share your thoughts with us in the comments below with hashtag cinema recap. Until next time, stay tuned.